Well, welcome to my shop. I'm Earl, and Earl small video, small segment shop. I don't know, I get tongue tied, I guess. Got a mess in here right now. Uh, I haven't been doing too much segment for a year. I've had a major operation, had other problems. And then someone I know and uh, asked me if I could make a Native American type flute. The short answer I found out is no, I cannot. You have to be Native American to make a Native American flute. That's the way it is. However, I can make a Native American type flute, which uh, I spent a lot of research on. And uh, after I did a lot of research, I made about 20 flutes learning how to make them. And uh, I finally come up with an easy way to do it. I'm not making a real high class one that you sell for a lot of money. But I'm making one that's mostly for looks. Oh, it'll make a noise and it'll play. But it's not tuned. And it's not, uh, like I said, a really expensive one. It's something I would say is good for craft fairs and stuff like that. But I uh, give the person that wanted one, one of them, maybe give them more. I don't know. And anyway, what I've come up with is an easy way to do it. To make a Native American flute, Native American flute's the only one in the world. It's got two chambers. It's got a air chamber here that you blow in, then the air comes out and goes to the sound hole, and it's got the sound chamber, of course, with your finger holes. Now, I've been making five, fing five hole flutes. There's also six hole flutes, but I've been working with the five hole flutes, and I made these right here. All of these are partially finished. I'm going to do a demonstration for the club. Here's another one that I put a little embellishment on. It's partially finished. Of course, when I get them finished, I'll mount a, a totem or a bird, whatever you call on it, and uh, put leather on it, feathers, beads, whatnot. So I got all of these. In order to make them, some people use a natural hollow item like bamboo or cane. Of course, bamboo is of the cane family, and they make them. There's a few people that bore them out on the lathe. But in order to bore them out on the lathe, you just about got to have a gun drill, or it'll get off center, it'll wander. That's a long bore. So most people do it by hollowing out two pieces, a bottom piece and a top piece, and then gluing them together. I have some here. Where is it at? Oh, here's one. They're hollowed out. Now, most people doing that, so hollow them by hand, but most use a router. They hollow out two pieces. There are two areas on both the bottom and the top piece. And they leave a, a web between them where the block is between the, the, the air hole and the sound hole. I, on the other hand, decided it'd be much easier just to make one cut all the way and then to glue in a block, which is nothing but a piece of dowel. Just sliced off some dowel and put it in there using a, this here happens to be a three quarter inch bit, making a three quarter inch hole when you finish, the actual diameter of the hole will be three quarters in. So a three quarter inch dowel glues in there just fine. Of course you cut it a little deeper and then you smooth up the top either in a planer, jointer, or drum sander. I use a drum sander and clean it up a little bit. Then they fit together perfect and you glue them together. Now, the hardest thing making these is cutting the sound hole. 
The sound hole has to be of certain size, which the recommended size is 732 in this direction, and half the diameter of the bore in this direction. And cutting it, you got to cut it at an angle in the front and straight down to the bottom. Cutting it can be a problem, a small hole like that with cutting it using small chisels, diamond files, whatnot. And I made quite a few learning how to cut the holes in this. Spent a lot of time on each one trying to get it right. So I racked my head for a long time trying to come up with an easy way to do it. And I finally figured out an easy way. Once I figured it out, it's so simple, it's pathetic. Instead of using one piece of wood for the top, I used three pieces. And I'll show you what I did. And it makes it very simple, of course. When you finished, of course, you can see sometimes, depending on the wood, you can see where there's three different pieces. But that don't bother me any. Like I said, these ain't real expensive. You can actually see that there's a third piece of wood in here down the middle. But, like I said, I don't care. These are uh, craft show type things. So, uh, what I'm going to do next is cut some stock to make the tops. Well, all the bottoms are just one piece of wood. We'll get on to that later. But first, I'm going to cut some stock for the tops. So, I cut up some stock. The, uh, we'll make a three-quarter bore. So the length they recommend not be longer than 18 times the diameter. Some places say 20 times the diameter of the bore from the sound hole. So I'm going to make them about 12 inches long from the sound hole. The slow air hole, the input air, there is no, I've never found a specification that says the longer the better. But I'm going to make about four inches long. So I'm going to use cedar. The width, I want it about an inch and a quarter, inch and a half wide when I'm done. And I've got some cedar. I milled these to half inch. A little, probably a little better than a half inch. Smooth them out. Jointer, drum sounder. Planer. I used a drum sander, got them smooth. Then I made this one thinner. It's just a little over three eighths. It's the width I want the sound hole. Like I said, the sound hole is, is starting point, they say, is half the diameter of the board. So this will be the centerpiece that will actually make the sound hole. So I've got these ready to make a top piece. Now this one's got a knot in it. I might have to cut it out and patch some more in. That's the trouble with cedar. Unless you're real rich, it's hard to get good cedar. I mean, for this. But I can cut the knot out and patch a piece in. This has got patchwork in it here. No big deal. So what I'm going to do is cut this and then glue it up. Okay, I've got this piece that's the width I want the sound hole cut. Cut it at a 40 degree angle. You got to have an angle on the sound hole. And they say the angle is between 30 and 45 degrees. I cut this at 40 degrees. So I'm going to glue this on. Then the other side of the sound hole has got to be square. So I'm going to glue this on square. Sound hole on supposed to be 732. I'm going to glue it a little tighter than that. That'll leave me room to clean the top up and then I can adjust it with a diamond file easy enough. So I'm going to glue these on. Give me the sound hole. Then the air hole, you want it, the air to transition smooth. Air's got to go up and over the top. 
So I just cut these at the same angle to make an air hole. After I get them glued on, I'll, I'll, I'll get a good view for the camera. So I'm going to just glue these on to this one side piece to start with. Get them positioned right and glue them on. Okay, I've got this glued up now. And you can see what I did. I got the 40 degree angle here and I got a straight. This will be the sound hole. The top's a little bit tighter than 7.30 seconds. That way get, when I smooth the top off, run it through a, a planer or a drum sander, it'll give me room to it'll open up a little bit so it'll be okay. And this is the supply air hole. They want the air to run smooth, then it goes over the top, but they want it smooth, so I got it at the same angle. don't have to be. It can be square. Now, I've got to do it. Another side on it, and this will complete the top piece. So I'm going to take some of this wood. Yeah, great stuff, huh? That's cedar for you. I'm going to make some patchwork from it. Patch up a couple of pieces and put on here. Do the other side on. So yeah, I'm going to cut some pieces and and splice them together for the other side. It'll be okay as long as I keep the joint good and tight. I've got this all glued up. And as you can see now, the sound hole's built in. And so is the air supply hole. Now the sound hole's a little tight on the top, which is good. I'm going to take it now and run the bottom across the jointer till I get it flat and smooth. After I get the bottom flat and smooth, then I'm going to run it through the drum sander. I could use the planer either way until I get the top nice and smooth. Okay, I got them good up now, planed up on all sides, ready to start routing them. I got a solid piece also for the bottom. It's also ready, sized up, smooth. Got another set here. Actually, I made more than two. I made about five or six. I only need route one at a time or two at a time. You get it set up, go ahead and route some. So the first thing I'm going to do, this is the air end. This is the sound end. I'm going to route a V-groove just in here on both this and the bottom piece which will help me center it up when I glue them. It'll also give me a center to put my life center when I go to turn and a guide for the drill the air hole. So I'm going to do that to all of them first and after I get that done I'll uh, show you what it looks like. I got them all routed with the V bit right here on the end. Both the bottom and the top piece. So when I glue them I can use it to line them up also, like I said, when I go to turn, the live center will sit in here and be a guide to drill it for the air hole. So I got all of them done that way. Every one of them. Just, just in far enough. What I'm going to do now is take out the V-bit, put in a half round, bull nose, half round, whatever you want to call it. This three-quarter inch one here. I'm going to change it out. I'm not going to move the fence, so it'll be also on dead center. I centered it up so it'll be on the same center if I don't move the fence. So I'm going to go ahead and swap it out. And I'm going to make a light pass with this on every one. Then I'll make a deeper pass, and then I'll make a deeper pass yet. I got them all routed out. One nice channel. Before I glue them together, of course, what I'll do what I'll do if I can find one is glue a, glue a piece of dowel and where the block goes both the top and the bottom same place and of course I'm going to smooth up the bottom again before I glue them together so that'll put the block in them. Now, 
These are cut much deeper than necessary to be round. I did that so I can get the thickness I want up here. After I put finger holes in it, put the plug in it, put finish in it, sign it, and put finish in it, then I'm going to have to put it across the joiner and the planer and the drum sander and take it down to where it's just round. Because I like them round. They're easier to turn on a lathe when they're round. And that's the size I want, three quarters inch round. So yeah, I'm gonna have to cut some off both sides. Except for this one. This one is big. It's extra long. I wanted it that way. And I'm gonna leave it with this oblong hole in it. The holes don't have to be round. Some people even make them some with square holes, but they do need to be smooth. So I'm I'm going to finish this up, put a plug in it, put finger holes in it, put some finish in it, and then just barely clean the surface up, give me a good glue surface after I put finish on it, and glue it together and leave this oblong. So that'll give me more it give me a larger chamber, sound chamber. Of course, it'll give me a larger slow air chamber, too. So, uh, the length will be okay. For a three quarters inch sound chamber, 12, 13 inches, about as far as you want to go from the sound hole. That's what's recommended. So, yeah, these are about these will be about six inch, six inch sound chamber flutes. All the ones with three quarter inch. Like I said, right now they're bigger than three quarter, but when I get done cleaning them up, I'll take them down to three quarter. So right now, yeah, finger holes, a little plug in them all, put some finish in them, and then we'll go from there. Okay, when I routed them out, I sharpened a bit before I routed them. In the last pass, I made a real light pass. So sanding them didn't take too much. They were pretty smooth. And this is cedar, pretty soft. So I only sanded them up to 320. No need going past that. But I sanded them all. Then I glued the cut off pieces of dowel in them. To separate the chambers for the plug between the chambers. Now the dowel in the top piece goes just to the back side of the sound hole. You don't want to cover in any of the sound hole, but you want it just on the back side of it. And then of course the plug for the bottom piece has got to be the exact same distance in so when you glue the halves together they will match. So now what I'm going to do is flush cut these all off. Okay, I've got all the plugs flush cut. What I'm going to do now is drill the finger holes from the inside. Now you don't have to drill the finger holes now, you can wait and do it later, but I'm going to drill them. The finger holes, some flutes have six holes and some have five. I do five holes three in the bottom, two at the top. Like I said, some have six, but everybody that plays them never uses the fourth hole. So why you point and drill it? Now the placement of them, it's approximately the middle third of the flute from the sound hole to the end. And there's many places around the internet that tells you where to put them. Of course, it depends on the size of the flute, where they're going to be. Depends, too, on the size of the holes. But the best place to find where to locate the finger holes is flutopedia.com. I'll put it up here so you can see it. Anyway, all these are three-quarter bow and six or 12 inches long. 
and I've got a story stick for that. So I just put the story stick in and mark where the finger holes go. So I'm going to mark all of them and then drill them. And like I said, I'll drill them from the inside. The inside of the bore needs to be smooth. That's why I like to do it before I glue them up so I can get it smooth so there's no little pieces or ragged edges on the inside. Okay, I've got the finger holes drilled in. I doubt if you can see it, the camera, but I put a chamfer on each of them, both inside and out. Like I said, the inside you want it as smooth as possible. And the outside, of course, you're going to be putting your fingers on it. Put the chamfer on it. I used the conical bit, diamond bit, from this set of diamond tools for Dremel that I got at Harbor Freight. I got these Dremel tools and I got a set of diamond files from Harbor Freight. And these Harbor Freight tools, I'm actually happy with. They actually performing right well. I've been using this flat one for quite a while and it's still just like new. So I'm happy with them. Anyway, I got these nice and smooth and I'm ready now to put finish on the inside. Now of course when I put finish on the inside undoubtedly I'll get some on the edge here. But not to worry because I'm going to cut, cut this edge down and refresh it later so it'll give me a good blue surface even if I do get it. Now everybody I've seen on the forum uses oil or wax and once in a while shellac. Now I've got some oil linseed oil that's thinned out and I'll put it on a couple of coats. I like to put it on thinned out but you can put it on straight or use whatever you want. But I've never seen Polly put on one, ever. So I don't know. You can try it if you want, but I'm going to use oil linseed oil on the inside. Put on a couple of thinned out layers. All right. I got finish on the inside, nice and smooth. Got the holes. Everything smoothed out in here. Now, I've got to reduce the size down. They don't, I'm going to take them down where the hole is actually round. They don't have to be taken down that far. <clears throat> Way too big right now. But I like them round. I think they look better and it's easier to turn on the lathe when I put the live center in here it holds it better if it's round. Anyway, these are going to be three quarter round. So I have to take material off this side, both of them. I can use either a planer, drum sander, or I could even use the uh, joiner to take material off. I need a nice, flat, smooth surface so I can glue them together, though, when I'm finished. So I'm going to go ahead, probably use the drum sander, and take them down to the right size. Okay, I brought them down to size. So now, nice, flat, smooth, clean. They match up. The plug just fits in the end. So they're ready to be glued up. When I glue them up, I got to make sure the inside is lined up, not the outside. Care less about the outside. It won't be perfectly aligned. Same thing with the back where I got the notch. Make sure the insides are lined up. Make sure this end is even, which means if this end's even, this end's even, 
Let's get it even here. Then these line up. Those have got to line up and be glued down. So I'm already start gluing them up now. It's time to go eat, so I'll probably start gluing them up tomorrow. I've got uh, a small square stick put in this end to line them up. It's been shellac, so less chance of it sticking. Got a coarse three quarter inch dowel here to put in this end to line them up. Put glue on them. Put the pins in, clamp them, then pull the pins out. Then I gotta run this through to clean up the squeeze out on the inside because I want the inside smooth. So first I'm gonna put a little glue on one of them. Don't need them both. Then I'm gonna put the pins in, line it up, and clamp it. Got glue on it. Got the pins on both ends to line it up. Got the clamps on it. Now I'm going to remove the pins. Move the pin from that end. The square hole. Got a square pin. Remove a dowel from this end. Okay. Now, clean out the Squeeze out on the inside. That's paper towel is all it is on a dowel. Okay. Squeeze out on the outside I don't care about. I can take a chisel and remove that. Many ways to remove that. I don't care about it. So it's clean on the inside. Now I'll let it dry for at least 15 minutes and I'll grow up another one. Okay, I got them glued up. I've got the sides flattened. Run them over the joiner. Fact is, I run them enough to take off any excess material. So I got them down to just about the right size, sides, bottom, and top. Not exact, but when I turn them, I'll turn them around, so uh, it's not important to get them exact, just close. What I'm going to do now, and I don't have to, but I'm going to do, is knock the corners off. I'm going to use a round over bit on the router and just knock the corners off. Except, I'm not going to knock them off on the top here, where the holes are, the sound hole and the air hole. I've got the piece between the sound hole and the air hole rounded in the back and smooth kind of a ramp I don't, I don't think you could see it but I got it smooth there give it airflow a smooth track going over now the air going from a air hole to the sound hole has got to have a, a, a guide a, a track really a flue it's got to be about 1 32nd inch deep in the width of the sound hole. There's three ways to do it. You can cut it into the flute, flute itself. You can cut it into the bird that goes on top. I got a test piece here with a, with a flute cut in it, rough cut in it, just a test. If you, you can do that, put it in a bird. Or you can cut a spacer. Now, a lot of people use brass or lead for a spacer, but I don't like it. I got some wood that I put through my drum sander to get it down. Get it down to actually 0 .03 inches. Now, I've got some down that thick. My drum sander actually took material down that, that thin. So I got, I got some material just sanded down just to make spacers with. Actually on this flute here, you can see where I glued a spacer on. I, I put a piece of uh, bloodwood spacer on this maple flute so you can see how the spacer goes on it. 
I like the spacer idea best. It's the easiest. I don't want to, like I said, I don't want to get it more involved than I have to. I like easy. So I'm going to go ahead and knock the corners off all the Got the edges knocked off. All except for this area right here on top. Now what I'm going to do is turn it. I'm going to turn this end first. Sides may not be exactly equal or the bottom and the top. So I'm going to put the center in here. Not real tight. Just snug. I don't want to split it. Don't have to be grilled or tight. If you've got a sharp tool. I'm going to turn it about this much. That way it'll make sure that the center is centered in it. I'll reverse it then and turn this in. So first I'm going to turn this back about this much, just enough. Put it in the chuck, make sure the outside is even with the inside. It's got even material all the way around. So I'm going to go ahead and chuck it up. Okay, I've got this end turned round. That ensures that it is centered. The hole centered in it. What I'm going to do put a plug in it. Not very far, just put a little plug in it. That way, when I put it in the jaws and clamp it, it won't crush it. I'm going to reverse it now. I know this end centered. I'm going to take a quarter inch drill and drill out the center here where this small square hole is. After I get it drilled out, then I'm going to put the live center in here and turn this and not make sure that this end centered. So I'm just going to put this in the chuck. Now I'm going to take and drill this out with a quarter inch drill and then put the live center in it. I've already got the center mark with that little square hole that I used when I glued it up. It's dead center. I got a quarter inch drill. I'm just going to drill it out right dead center there where I got it. I'm going to put the live center back on them. I'm going to turn this in. I'm going to taper it down for a mouthpiece. I'm going to turn it right up to here. Leave this. I'm not going to go past here. And I'm going to turn from here all the way up to the other side of the... That. Leave this flat here. Got both ends turned. The center section, not turned. I want to leave the top flat, but I don't want the sides and the bottom turned. Well, can't do that with a turning tool, so I'm going to use good old-fashioned hand plane. It'll take me just a couple of minutes to plane it all down. I'll go on plane until I get it all planed down, same as the ends. I've got this all taken down. Now all I've got to do is sand this off right now. So I'm just going to go ahead, I'm going to bring up the dust collector, make a lot of noise, I'm going to sand it. It's all sanded now, it's starting to look like a flute even. So, now I think what I'm going to do is put a little adornment on this one. I think I'm going to put a piece of turquoise here and here. These are small 
pieces. Very small pieces. They're actually imitation turquoise. They're not real. You can see them better here on this one. I got three of them on this one. So I'm going to put two on that one, I think. In order to put them on, I'm going to take a six millimeter drill and put a slight drill, drill just slightly, well want them and then epoxy them in the hole. I put two eight millimeter holes in it. Not deep enough to go through to the inside. Just deep enough to hold that turquoise. So take epoxy and epoxy in the two pieces of turquoise. I've got the uh, turquoise pieces put on. A little bit of adornment. You can you can put them on or not, whatever, it's optional. However, some people put wood burning on them. Some people paint them. There's a lot of different things you can do to, to fancy them up. But uh, like I said, I just put a couple little pieces. Actually, imitation turquoise. Now, you have to get the air from the supply hole to the sound hole. To do it, you need a track, a channel, a flue, whatever you want to call it. It's got to be the width of the sound hole, and it's got to be between 132nd and 364th inches deep. Now you can put it in here, that works good, except I have an awful time trying to get a, one the right depth and get it smooth and flat on the bottom. For me, that's a big problem. I get them too deep, I'm in trouble. So, you can also put them in the bird, the bird to block, whatever you want to call it. You can cut a channel in now and put it in. And that works, but if you do that, the positioning of the bird is more critical. It's got to be in the exact right position. It is really critical when you do that. The third way, of course, is to put a spacer in there with a channel cut in it. And that's what I like to do. It's easy. Now, a lot of people use brass or lead. To me, that just don't look right. I don't know. That's just me, I guess. So I put some material through my drum sander and got it down. This piece here, 0 .3, 0 0.033, close enough. That's what I'm going to use. Piece of this. Now, in order to cut this and get it right, only way I can do it is by putting blue tape on it. That keeps it from splitting and breaking. So I'm going to put blue tape on a piece and cut it off, and then I'm going to cut it to fit here. I've got a piece now to cut, to fit it. Of course, I've got blue tape on to hold it together. Got to glue it on just like, just like that. After I get it glued on, of course, I'll have to smooth out the edges around and trim them up. So I gotta put some glue on it, flap it down again. The glue's dried. I pull the tape off. I'm gonna have to trim a couple of feathers off here. A little feather right there. Get the feathers off of it. No big deal. Theoretically, now, if I just put a plain block over it, normally you'd have a, a rounded edge here just to break, break the edge over a little bit. Or even put a chimney and cut a chimney in it. But theoretically, if I just put a block over it, it should make sound now. I say theoretically. Put some rubber band just to hold it temporary there. Back it up a little bit. Good. 
Now the next thing to do is to trim the edges of this and smooth it up. I'm going to use the diamond file and clean it up around the edges a little bit. Put some finish on it. And then I gotta make a bird for it. They call it a bird. Some people call it just a block. Some, even just a plain block will work. It's all you need, really. But again, some people call it a totem, a fetish, a bird. It's more decoration than anything else. Like I said, just a plain block will work. We know that. I just did it. So, I'm going to trim this up, put some finish on it, and then we'll try and make a bird for it. Okay, I've got a base paint for the bird. Of course, this is all you really need. You don't really need the bird on it. Got a chimney. They say that makes the sound better. I don't know if it does or not. Chimney fits, of course, right over the sound hole. Got a slot where I can put leather to tie it down. Kind of elaborate, but now I'm going to carve a bird for it. Now, I'm not a good carver. Be a rough looking bird. And of course, a lot of the birds aren't birds. They're bears or fox or deer or whatever. And some are even abstract designs. And again, yeah, they're just uh, just uh, decoration for it. Okay, I made a bird. Well, it sort of kind of looks like a bird. I don't know. I'm not a carver, like I said, but I got it glued on the bottom kind of big. They don't have to be that big. But uh, I'm going to leave it like that. I'm going to put some finish on it. After I put a little finish on it, uh, then we're going to go ahead and tie it down with some leather and put some beads and feathers on it and uh, see what it does. Of course, now the finish on these, I've seen a lot of people talk about what the finish they use. Most of them use oil or wax once in a while, shellac. I've never seen anybody put poly on them for varnish. That don't mean they don't, but I've never seen it. Uh, and this one here, I've got boiled linseed oil on it. That's what I'm going to put on the bird. And like I said, then we're going to tie it down and put some beads and feathers on the thing. Okay, the bird is dry now. I've got it mounted on using some leather. I've got four wraps on it under the bird. I've got two wraps here up on the front just for looks. The bird pretty well aligned. It should make noise now. So now, let's put some beads and some feathers on it. Okay, there it is. Beads, feathers. The bird's tied on with leather. Now some people tie the bird on with bright colored material, not leather. Yeah, and there's a, all kinds of adornments you can put on it besides beads and feathers. I don't know, maybe I let these hang too long. I don't know. Anyway, it's ready to go. Gift or craft fair. Now, I can't play it. I'm not a player, but... Anyway... You see how I did it, the easy way, especially the sound hole, making it the easy way using three pieces of material and a top piece. And uh, I don't know, I'm going to make a few more of these probably, and then uh, sooner or later I'm going to get back to making my open segments again, but I ain't going to promise when. Uh, this is a lot of fun. Hopefully I can sell some, so... Uh, I appreciate everybody that's watching my videos and uh, really appreciate those that subscribe. And if you want to leave me any email, I'm going to leave my email address up here somewhere. And uh, thank you and come back for my next video.